Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Healthy Living Blueprint, where we are discussing how to prevent, treat, and potentially reverse chronic and autoimmune disease naturally. My name is Stephanie Grover, and this morning I have the absolute pleasure of speaking to Dr. Jonathan Fields. Dr. Fields is an internationally renowned integrative medicine practitioner, as well as a martial and visual artist. He is also an author and public speaker. Dr. Fields runs an incredibly successful integrative medicine practice in South Florida, where he specializes in acupuncture, functional medicine, herbs, stem cell treatment, IV therapy, and the list can go on. He is an incredibly talented man. Jonathan, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, and thank you for that uh, wonderful intro. Really appreciate it, and I really appreciate all the great work that you're doing, uh, bringing all these good people together and uh, sharing with uh, like-minded people who want some information on ways they can heal themselves naturally. Thank you for your kind words, and this, this event would definitely not be possible without the support and participation of you and everybody else on the panel, so I'm incredibly grateful for your time and effort in, in joining us today. I am so excited for this call because not only, you know, every time we interact, whether it's through these interviews that we've done, I've been, I've had the honor of doing a few of these with you. I just always learn so much and not even just through the interviews, but, you know, when I find myself in, in South Florida, you're always my go-to doctor for anything I need. So we've had a lot of fun in the past investigating what's going on in this body, <laughs> which has been interesting. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a learning process for all of us, and we learn just as much from the patients as we do, you know, about ourselves throughout the process, so it's, uh, it's fun, and it's, and it's nice to be able to share this kind of stuff, and I'm very honored to be here, and it's uh, my pleasure as well to be able to give back, and uh, hopefully we can help some other people learn some stuff out there. That's the plan. That's the plan. So you recently expanded your practice and have been specializing in stem cell therapy. So, you know, congratulations, first of, of all, on the expansion. Um, but stem cell therapy specifically is something that I am fascinated about. So I would love for you to share more with us regarding the, the process, what it is, and just starting with the basics, <laughs> if we okay. can look at what what is a stem cell? Correct. So um, I, I'm glad you brought that all up. The science is fascinating. I've been very interested in it for a long time as well, um, for myself personally, and also for the uh, healing uh, potential benefits, right? Um, and what, to see what the future might hold for these kinds of therapies. I, I think we all know that. Uh, the regular allopathic or the Western medical system has its drawbacks. I mean, for all the good that it does, um, there's certain things, and we're not going to talk into all the, uh, about all the things that aren't good, because uh, we know there's plenty of um, side effects and other things going on out there. But there, there's, just, there's limitations. Let's put it that way. I have a lot of patients come to me, and they've already seen a dozen doctors and specialists, and they're just not getting the results that they want or they're not happy with the options that they're getting mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. So one of the things that's been, uh, I guess, gaining popularity in the last 10 to 15 years or so is the stem cell therapy. And the stem cells are basically, to answer your question, your body's own natural cells. Your body already has the ability to heal just about anything, right? What happens if you get a cut, right? You bleed, you scab, yeah. you heal. So your body is intuitive. It knows how to do these things. You don't have to uh, try too hard, but the quality of the stem cells, and that's something that we talk about with patients, also depends on the quality of your own health. So obviously we're all on different levels of health. So uh, your cells, for instance, might be a lot healthier than somebody who eats six bags of Fritos every day, right? And then a, a case of soda. You're gonna have better quality stem cells. But the, the stem cells basically have the ability, and there's different types of stem cells, and we'll go into that a little bit because there is a big difference between the different types of stem cells. But it's the cells uh, have the ability to heal and repair tissue, and they basically go in and they look for damaged tissue or damaged, uh, whether it be organs or nerves or uh, any type of tissue, and they go in to basically repair the damage. 
So it, it's part of your uh, natural immune system. Uh, has to do with your growth factors and cytokines and inflammatory processes in the body that are meant to protect you. So you have this kind of stuff going on naturally within the body anyway. We all have them. And what we do with the stem cell therapy is we look at ways to um, concentrate these cells and mm -hmm. activate these cells and then put them back into the places where they'll make the most amount of difference uh, and have significant uh, healing potential for the patient, depending on what it is. Does that kind of answer the question? Or it, does. You a little bit? it does, yes, thank you. And these stem cells, sorry if this is a bit of a silly question, but these stem cells, do they regenerate themselves? Are we constantly producing new stem, stem cells the way that we do other cells, our regular cells? That is a, a really good question. And uh, the answer is yes and no. Right, so we should, uh, we do naturally, uh, we produce them, we do have a certain amount in the body. Now, as we age, like many other things, they begin to decline to some extent. Okay. And then there's other factors that can affect the health of your stem cells. I had already mentioned previously, um, dietary factors. Obviously, if you're not putting in good fuel in your car, your car is not gonna go anywhere, right? It's gonna eventually break down. So the same thing happens to your stem cells. There's environmental toxins, Environmental toxins can affect the quality of all our cells, including the stem cells. So even everything from the uh, hygiene products that we use, the toothpaste, the fluoride in our water, or whatever, can basically influence our stem cell and the stem cell potential. And then there's things like we've uh, spoke about in our last uh, interview, like stress, right? Uh, if you have, if you're stressed out through the roof and your cortisol levels and your adrenaline are running through the roof and you're not replenishing or you're not sleeping properly, that will also decline and weaken or uh, I guess dampen your stem cells ability to regenerate and to concentrate and to reach their full healing potential. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, you mentioned that there are different kinds of stem cells as well. Yes, so there's a, a few different ones that we use and there's probably gonna be more discovered in the future. I'm sure there are things like uh, uh, hematopoietic stem cells, uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, we got uh, pluripotent stem cells. There's embryonic stem cells uh, and all types of amni uh, yeah, amniotic, I think I mentioned. Um, all these different types of cells, uh, which is good to uh, know if you're looking into it and different cells treat different things. Uh, the type of stem cells that most people are probably familiar with are the ones that you see getting from a bone marrow extraction or fat yeah. extracted. The fat extracted stem cells are the mesenchymal stem cells from the fat are considered to be among the gold standard yeah. of the stem cells. Yeah. And uh, that procedure for whatever reason, and once again, people who are obese or actually have a less quality of stem cells, even in the fat tissue. So, and you could see it, you can look at the actual tissue and you could see the difference in colors, variations, and you could tell from the time and experience that, hey, this person is not gonna have the greatest quality. Stem cells. It doesn't mean they're not gonna get the full um, healing, but it just, somebody else's cells might be better. Okay, yeah. so uh, it's the science behind all the different types of cells gets pretty complicated. The other one that's very common is, is a PRP, so platelet rich plasma, okay. which is uh, one of the most, uh, simple uh, processes. And one of the ways we look at it uh, with the different types of cells, we kind of look at it like fat is like the soil, right? If you're growing a garden, you can look at fat as being the soil and uh, the seeds is gonna be the regenerative cells that we're actually extracting from fat and bone marrow. Okay. And, and the fertilizer could be PRP. And uh, so one of the things we do is kind of, we mix depending on the severity and, and most people think of stem cells mostly for joint, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if you have osteoarthritis of the knee or the hip or the shoulder and a patient is not ready to do surgery, let's say they need a replacement surgery, but they don't want to do a replacement surgery for whatever reason. They don't want to be out for the recovery time. They're scared of surgery. Maybe they're too old for surgery. Maybe it's not really necessary. So some so stem cells is a different alternative. So depending on, on the severity of the... Um, let's say the arthritis or how much cartilage is left or, you know, how much bone-on-bone -bone action is going on in there, we can decide what kind of stem cells we want to use. 
the procedure, the way I was trained on by an orthopedic, um, basically if somebody's at their lowest amount of cartilage and the bone is completely arthritic and they want to try something like that, we do a combination of all three. We actually extract the fat uh, and we extract the bone marrow. And then we, we have a very complicated processing um, technique to basically get them to their highest level of concentration and activation as much as possible. And we do PRP, their plate leverage plasma, and we do all three and we inject all three at one time in the joint. That way you're getting the maximum potential out of it. Yeah. Uh, and with the platelet-rich plasma, it, I'll kind of give you a, a quick example of how we separate it so people can kind of uh, visualize that. In their mind. Mm -hmm. Let's say we'll draw blood from a patient. And this is the most common one. And we have a, another procedure where we actually extract uh, multi uh, or pluripotent stem cells from, from blood as well. So with the PRPs, which you hear the PRP facials, vampire facials, but they also work for joints and tendons. If you have a tennis elbow, tendonitis, uh, they use them for hair as well, for like a hair transplant to regenerate hair growth. Um, PRP is like one of the lower form stem cells. It's much less expensive and much easier of a process than doing okay, a full stem cell procedure like bone marrow extraction is a pretty serious procedure. Um, has to be done in an OR room. Mm. Okay, but with the, uh, with the plasma, uh, the rich plasma, what I do is I have a registered nurse that comes into the office. We take your blood. The blood gets spun in the centrifuge. And then it separates the plasma from the red blood cells. So in the tube, let's say you have this vial of blood, you put it in a spin at a certain RPM for however many minutes, and it separates the plasma and the blood. Plasma is about 55% of your blood, and the erythrocytes, the red blood cells, is about 45% of the blood. And then you got about 1% of buffy coat, which is the leukocytes and the platelets. So you can actually see it from a vial of red blood. The white, uh, yellowish, clear liquid rises up. That's the plasma. The red uh, liquid kind of goes down, and that's the red blood cells. And then in the middle, there's a little buffy coat. It's like a little thick white layer right in between the two. Okay. And that's the area, the highest concentration of platelets and leukocytes and all the growth factors and cytokines that are going to help regenerate healing. So what we do is we get rid of most of the plasma and most of the red blood cells. And there's different people who have different processes. Some people only use plasma and buffy coat. Uh, we like to use a little bit of the uh, red blood cells as well, because there are, while it may cause more inflammation on re-injecting it into you, right? Uh, so some people don't like to do that because they feel like the patient is going to have some increased discomfort. Yeah. However, there are certain uh, growth factors that are only found in the red blood cells. So if you're eliminating one of those completely, mm -hmm. you basically took out some of the healing potential as well, just so the patient might be a little less sore in the first 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So we like to use all three. Um, you get the, uh, basically the buffy coat, the, the platelets, and you get a little bit of plasma and a little bit of erythrocytes. Our process is pretty interesting. We put the stuff in a, um, platonic light chamber after that, that actually, uh, activates the stem cells even more and wakes them up, makes them more active, more productive, makes them replicate, uh, stuff of that nature. And then we kind of inject that back, uh, per se, if you had a shoulder injury, whether it be a, a minor rotator cuff tear or some mild arthritis, like PRP would be great for those kinds of scenarios. We can inject it right back. It can take up to eight months or so to get the full effects of the stem cells. So they are still alive, they're still growing, they're still healing, okay? which is very different from the immediate gratification that we're used to going to the doctor with the thinking like, you're gonna get a cortisone shot. Well, people don't realize though, you keep doing cortisone shots, they raise your blood sugar, uh, they can uh, wreak havoc on your liver, and new research in the last couple of years has actually shown that cortisone shots can degrade the joints even further. So while it may give you some temporary pain relief and reduce the inflammation, you're actually going to end up needing a replacement of that joint faster if you keep doing shot after shot after shot of that. And doctors typically don't warn you about that stuff, but it's public knowledge. I mean, you could Google it. It's, you know, yeah. the information's out there. I, I find that's a big problem with a lot of the medical treatments I don't want to say treatment, but options that we have at the moment is that with that instant gratification, that treating the symptoms, getting rid of the pain immediately, most of the time, it, you know, when we look at the long-term effects that it has, it's doing a lot more damage in the long run. So like you say, with the stem cell treatment, it's you're far better off looking at the bigger picture and what's going to happen in the long run and, and not just chasing that immediate, that instant gratification. 
correct. And that's why it's a type of regenerative medicine and regeneration doesn't happen overnight, right? And, yeah. and people, like you said, uh, you know, with the instant, like, you know, people are used to going to the doctor, this hurts, give me a pill, fine, I feel fine. But you're right, you have a serious long-term consequences, right? Then are, am I going to be addicted to these pills? What else are they doing to my uh, dopamine and serotonin over a long time? Am I going to be chronically constipated from these pills? Do I have dry mouth from these pills? You know, how long is it going to last? And, and the real problem, the heart of that problem is you're not fixing the problem. It's like a band-aid, right? If you have a, a leaking ship, you can't just put a band-aid on it. That eventually it's going to pop off and that leak's going to be times 10. Right? Mm -hmm. Or you go to the dermatologist and say, I have a rash. Oh, you put some cortisone cream on it and it goes away. Yeah. yeah, but then two weeks later, it comes up on the other side and it's quadruple the size. Mm -hmm. right? Because you haven't addressed the root cause of the issue. So this is one method uh, that kind of helps address the root cause. And there are a lot of similarities to how acupuncture works and how some of these other natural therapies work, which is why it uh, kind of drew me into this. And, and, and the science is fascinating. Now, the one uh, caveat with this kind of stuff is people are like, oh, well, you know, it's not scientifically proven or this and that. And um, there is there is some truth to that, right? But it, it depends how you look at it, right? The science is clear like this stuff works this is how the body works so mm -hmm. that's scientifically proven will doing an injection of this fix all your problems there's not been enough research invested into long-term major studies right because pharma big pharma doesn't they can't make 10 billion dollars on patenting stem cells because for, for the most part it's coming from your own body yes so nobody's going to go ahead and, and spend five years and a billion dollars to research this kind of stuff so most of the research that we do have a lot of it is positive but a lot of it comes from case studies and things like that and so it's not enough to meet the gold standard of science uh basically where we have these double blind uh placebo controlled studies we just don't have enough of that yet but that's why it's it's thrilling to be on the cutting edge of this kind of research and to actually you know at, at the end of the day um I, you know, what's most important to me is, is patient outcome. Of course, yeah. I, I, I don't care about public perception. I don't care, uh, you know, if everybody, what, what people think. If the patient is doing better, if the patient feels better, then I'm happy and we did our job. And, and part of the problem is, right, it's, it's not doctors don't heal people. Your cell heals yourself. Your body is healing yourself, whether you do it through diet or exercise or stem cells or I don't care, you know, you're responsible for your own health. And that's part of, I think, what we need to get people more open to is, is taking responsibility for their health. And then like we talked about in the very beginning, if you are taking responsibility for your health and then you go and do something like a stem cell procedure or a massage or whatever it is, your outcomes are gonna be better. And that's statistically, that is proven, but it's, it's, you know, it's just a matter of time to be able to collect all that data and be able to, do these uh, uh, systematic analysis and go back and review all this stuff and get it published. Uh, it, it's a lot of work. And uh, no, there's not one governing body or entity that's taken up that task. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And yeah. um, like you say, you know, stem cell therapy is fantastic. And I agree that the healing that that we get from this is out of this world and it's we really are on the cutting edge of this technology um but what's important with stem not just stem cell therapy but any of these different kind of treatment methods is you know getting understanding where the problem came from originally and making sure that you've made those changes and have that understanding so that the, right. the treatment can be as effective as possible and you're not going to end up relapsing back into sort of all ways that brought up the, the the issue in the first place. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. And I'm really glad you brought that up. And this is a common thing I do with my patients on a daily basis, right? So they come in for acupuncture or they come in for PRP or for stem cells or whatever it is. And they basically, they get their treatment. And they're like, okay, so I'm good now, right? <laughs> like, well, no, you still need to do all the, you know, whether it be dietary things, you still need to see a physical therapist or a personal trainer in work. Because if, if you wore out the cartilage in your knee because of poor form when you're running or poor posture or something like that, and okay, now it feels better because we did the stem cell procedure and it's great, that's not going to last forever, Yeah. right? That, that's enough to get you out of pain so you could walk and so you could function. Now it's your responsibility to make corrections. Am, mm -hmm. Are these muscles not supporting me properly? 
Am I, is my counterbalance not proper? Am I, you know, stepping in the wrong direction? Am I doing something to further degrade the joint, right? Otherwise you're just strengthening bad habits, mm -hmm. right? And which is gonna lead you to the same results that you started with. So yeah. I try to encourage people to, to realize all this stuff is basically the beginning of your healing path. And once again, it's where the doctor doesn't heal you. We don't save you, or, you know, we might just be the middleman. We're gonna point you in the right direction and then your body's gonna do what it does. And if you teach your body new things and if you make corrections, your mm -hmm. body will correction. And if you treat it the same old way, well, yeah, you might get some temporary relief. Maybe it'll be permanent, but probably not. You're gonna end up in the same boat. So that's that's a very good point that you brought up there. And that's very true. And and like you say, you as the practitioner or the coach or whoever your whatever your role is, you can guide the patient, you can guide the client, you can be the GPS, but us ourselves we're still driving the car we're still in control of that wheel we get to decide you know which route we're going to take and hopefully you take the guidance but it's up to you as to as to where and how you want to do it um right we and we have the same responsibility to ourselves as practitioners 100 percent, 100 percent, definitely um you mentioned a lot about using stem cell therapy for cartilage and joints and shoulders and all the rest but is stem cell therapy appropriate to you, or what can it treat? Can it treat uh, certain forms of chronic disease, of autoimmune disease? What's the extent of treatment that can be done with uh, stem cell therapy? So that is one of the most fascinating things, I think, even more so than the joints and the orthopedics, because with the orthopedics, I feel like uh, there may be more options. Right? We know we can do acupuncture we know we can do stem cells we know we can do joint replacement we know we can do cortisone shots we know we can inject hyaluronic acid or gel into the joints to lubricate them temporarily there uh, you know we know we can do chiropractic there's so many different options but a lot of times when it comes to some of these rare autoimmune diseases or things like that the options are very limited i mean you will look at a lot of them they're basically they're just the doctors are straight up telling you there's no treatment which is a big part of the problem too, because uh, we know for a fact, scientific fact, placebo plays a big role in this. Mm -hmm. so if you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, you're screwed, right? That's the worst thing you wanna hear. And unfortunately, too many of my patients come in and the doctors do tell them things like that, like you have no hope, you're never gonna get any yeah. better, there's no cure or there's no treatment. Um, and sure, with autoimmune things, yeah, we, we can never say we're gonna cure anything, mm -hmm. but, can we manage the symptoms? Can we slow down the degradation? Yes. Can we offer you a better quality of life? A lot of times those answers are yes. And you've seen it happen with what you do with the coaching and the nutrition and all that. And we've seen it happen with exercise science and we see what acupuncture and stem cells. So we actually offer a, um, a uh, type of therapy in our clinic that works on multipotent uh, adult stem cells. Uh, which is, they're kind of similar to the embryonic stem cells. I'm going to talk about the embryonic stem cells and some of the dangers of that in, in just a minute. But multipotent cells can basically differentiate into any type of cell that is needed. So mm -hmm. think of it like as an embryo, right? When you're born and you have all these little bundle of cells and you're a little microscopic little thing, how do the cells know which cells should make a kidney? How do they know which cells make a, a finger or, or a hair or an eyeball, right? The cells just have this innate ability and this intelligent design. They're programmed to do this. They know how to do it. So we have an extraction process, which is super complicated. It actually takes a, a whole day uh, to process. And it's a, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. We, it. We're currently doing it from blood also. And there's other way to harvest uh, pluripotent cells and multipotent cells. You can also get them from bone marrow but it's very different from the uh, platelet-rich plasma. We, get, we take the cells out, they're spun multiple times. Uh, they're exposed to hypothermia because the cold helps activate them. They go in a hypoxic chambers that helps them replicate as well. They go in an ultrasonic uh, vibration, um, basically cleaners where it basically shakes them off and breaks down the cell, um, the cell walls mm -hmm. and makes them activate and grow and replicate as well. Um, they go into the photonic light chambers that we talked yeah. about earlier. So it's super, super interesting. 
And then at the end of the day, we take this blood that's been processed uh, through all these methods and activate all these multiple cells. Mm -hmm. We put it into a saline bag and run it as an IV drip back into the patient. Okay. So then it becomes systemic because it's running through every vein and every artery in your whole body. And it's going to flush through all your organs and get in the uh, brain and basically everywhere else. So then these are the types of cells that go and look for a specific uh, places where you have an issue and they can actually transform themselves into cells that maybe are lacking or are damaged as opposed to what we're doing with the PRP or the uh, hematopoietic or the uh, mesenchymal cells where we, they're mostly, you know, we can say, hey, it's going to help with the joint, it's going to help with the tendon yeah, yes. or maybe help rebuild a little bit of cartilage, whether or not it's- These are more like thing. universal cells that will find the Bingo. problem and- that, that's the key word. So there has actually been some research. It's mostly animal studies, once again, or, uh, or in vitro studies. And they've actually shown that these uh, types of cells and these types of cell treatments have helped reverse things like osteoporosis and actually gain, which is a, like an autoimmune uh, bone loss that yeah. a lot of people suffer from, especially women, right? Uh, postmenopausal osteopenia, osteoporosis is very, very common. So they've shown in some of these tests that bone density has been increased. They've shown results in tests for uh, like autoimmune uh, diabetes, that some of the inflammation comes down, uh, the pancreas can start working better, insulin production starts working better. Um, they've shown to reduce uh, severe and systemic inflammation. So once again, there hasn't been any large scale studies, but this is how all the science starts. So you can't say it doesn't work because before we had aspirin or before we had any medication or vaccine or anything, at one point it was experimental. And at one point they said, wow, this works really great in the lab. Let's go try it out on a bunch of people and see what, happens. you know, hopefully at the point that it's safe. And this is a totally safe procedure. And now that I brought up the safe word, I'll just go ahead and put this out there. There's a lot of experimental stuff going on with stem cells that is very gray area. And that's part of what gives the whole industry a little bit of a, a bad reputation and a bad name. Because just like any industry, whether it's an auto mechanic or whatever, not to put it on auto mechanics, there's always people looking to capitalize on people at their lowest point when oh. they're suffering. Yeah. And there's a lot of these treatments are not safe or straight up illegal by the FDA. And some of this stuff is happening in the U.S., um, and that's why a lot of these stem cell treatments you see they're doing down in Mexico. They're like, yeah, you got to come with us down in Mexico. It's not because it's cheaper. It's usually actually more expensive. It's because the stuff is illegal. And hey, if you try some kind of crazy treatment and you die over there, yeah. nobody's responsible. You know, I mean, what are they going to do about it? Good luck trying to, you know, get any sort of uh, compensation or anything from the family or yeah. justice. It's just yeah. not going to happen. So the type of therapies that I was trained in doing and the type of therapies we employ in clinic, everything we do is according to FDA guidance. Now, none of this stuff is FDA approved. Neither are vitamins. Um, a lot of people don't know this. Epidural, not FDA approved. Okay. Wow. But every doctor does them, right? They do them in pregnancy. They do them for back pain. They do them, right? And uh, so uh, we follow FDA guidelines. And FDA guidelines say that anytime you're using uh, HCT, human cell tissue, okay, the cells have to be autologous, meaning it's coming from your own body. You can't take other people's cells and inject them into yourself. You can, and that's what they do with the embryonic stem cells and other types of stem cells, but there are dangers. Is it mostly safe? Probably. How effective is it? We don't know. Uh, but all the procedures we do were basically the, the FDA guidance basically says it has to be from you or a close family relative, like a brother or a sister or a mother or a father, something like that. And here's some of the risks. If I take your embryonic stem cell and inject it into my patient or into me, mm -hmm. how do I know you didn't have some kind of problems with your DNA? How do I know that's not going to turn into a tumor? How do I know that's not going to turn into cancer and those cells aren't going to grow? you know uncontrollably yes and that has happened it's happened and there's actually there's a documentary on stem cells now and it's kind of scary and uh but that just lets you know that why well, you got to watch who you're working with and always ask to you know for autologous cell uh people will tell you oh no warden's jelly is the best or the embryonic stem cells they're the best 
sure, they also carry the highest amount of risk and they're not the best. And your own cells are going to be better for you. Um, mm -hmm. There have been a few cases where people grew tumors. Um, there have there's been a few cases where people lost eyesight. Yeah. Um, there's cases I'm in, in a few groups uh, on Facebook and other places. And I have uh, actually I had a patient come in last week and they told me uh, uh, an MD that they were friends with gave his wife uh, one of these stem cells, an embryonic stem cell injection, I guess for a joint or whatever. Perfectly healthy, early 50s, never had any health issues other than, you know, arthritis. Yeah. And three months later, ended up with a uh, brain aneurysm and died. So is it related? No, maybe. Um, I've seen other stories of people, they had a stem cell procedure done and their kidneys shut down mm -hmm. or something like that. So I'm saying, you don't know when you're getting cells from somewhere else, uh, you know, there's risk for con contamination as well. Who knows how it's packaged and processed and, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. So the safest uh, and most legal thing is to use your own cell. That's how your body was designed to do it, right? Just like if you were to get a, an organ transplant, your body may reject that organ. Yes, and you need to have medications for the rest of your life mm -hmm. to make sure, you know, anti-rejection meds. And, and, that, and that stuff is scary. And that it's does. not worth saving a few bucks or you know, some snake oil salesman who tells you that's the best or your only option. Like look around, uh, be a conscious consumer and, and be educated when it comes to this stuff, which is why I'm really glad I'm being able to share this. Uh, I don't care if people come to us or not. Yeah. We just want people to be safe and not ruin this therapy. Because what happens is if enough people have side effects, they're just going to tell us, okay, all your stem cell guys, everybody will close me down, out of business, no more research, no more nothing, you're done. And then who loses? Everybody. 100%. No, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I'm fascinated by everything that you're sharing and I can definitely see the, the concerns and why it's so important to make sure that you are going to a legitimate source to a trusted practitioner who is familiar with all these rules. Um, what you said now was so interesting. I've just got a couple more questions I would like to throw in there a little bit. Um, you said when using the embryonic cells, um, and potentially, you know, the risks are, are obviously a little bit higher. Would epigenetics have anything to play, any role to play in that? Because that's so different with everybody and you don't know how those cells are going to react. Would that, would there be a link there or not really? 100%. That's a great point. Um, and, and the link is that we don't know. And what yeah. we don't know is, don't it's know. and like I said, we have seen some, some issues. There's been a few cases where people have grown tumors or things like that. Because if you're taking it from an embryo that was never born, and you don't know what that family line of genetics is. Maybe they've got 18 different autoimmune diseases and they're, you know, maybe they have a family history of cancer or, or stroke or whatever. And once you put this pluripotent or multipotent cell that's going to turn into different cells in your body, and then on top of that, you have no idea how it's going to react with your cells I and what underlying genetic stuff you have as well. So it's almost like a, a contraindication, like certain medications are contraindicated. And a lot of times doctors don't do a great job of cross-checking medications between different doctors and what was prescribed from who, and you end up with issues like that. And a lot of times we just don't know. The patients come in and they're on 20 different types of medications and nobody has the answer to that. Um, you can, so, you can cross-check the medications as well, but you, you're not cross-checking the DNA necessarily. You don't know what snips that right. person was dealing with or which ones you have or you know whatever the case is you just don't know like you say how that's gonna gonna interact or react correct and, and some people are more risk averse than others and uh and but unfortunately the problem is a lot of these doctors are one a not honest about the stuff two a lot of them are not even educated they i mean yeah. they went to a, oh <laughs> we heard oh we heard uh embryonic stem cells i went to the seminar they said it's the best thing in the world the science looks really good I trust them. They're making a ton of money. I'm going to offer this in my practice. Yes, yes. And that's just how, and, and it's not that they're evil or they have these bad intentions, but just don't know. they're doing their best like everybody they can. And, and, and it's a business, you know, so they're going to sell whatever they can. For someone looking to do uh, stem cell therapy, mm -hmm. you said that FDA it doesn't regulate it unless it's coming, unless it's your own stem cells. And you had mentioned earlier on in, in the talk, um, that some cells are obviously healthier than others. So if you get somebody who is sick, who is looking to do this treatment, but they have maybe been following a the standard American diet, their stress levels are very high. Would you advise to first work on 
getting the health of your individual cells up before going in for the treatment or could you still do the treatment? Just would it be as effective? How does that really work? So that is a really great point. And, and the answer is both. And it also depends on the person. Because as you know, some people want miracles, but they're not willing to put the work in, right? Mm -hmm. And some people, they just need to be pointed in the right direction. But I would definitely recommend somebody who would work with somebody like yourself on the nutrition side and the coaching side, just so mentally and uh, as far as the fuel that they're putting in is going to yield better results as far as when we're harvesting cells, uh, for sure. And there is different supplementation that we use as well to kind of help the stem cells stay more active and, and, and be more organized. Um, there's, there's potential for everyone. Um, it, it just depends on how far they're willing to go. And we usually, uh, what makes our clinic different is actually that we kind of incorporate these other modalities like acupuncture and herbal yeah. medicine. And, yes. and all, most stem cell clinics don't. They, you know, they might have some other types of therapies, but it's kind of like very cut and dry, like uh, almost like a surgeon or most doctors are. You're coming in for this, you get this and see you later and good luck. Right, we're we're more holistic and in, in integrative, and and we want the best results, and we want uh, not only because it's going to be good for us for business or for all their testimonials, it's going to be best for the patient, uh, and it's going to be best for everybody. And obviously, we feel good helping other people, and we want people to get the best results. So, um, and that's how we were trained, and that's my background. It comes from the Eastern medicine and, and martial arts and, and the qigong and all that stuff. We know that all that stuff will probably make more of a difference in the therapy, right? Or equal, right? Yes. So will you have benefits without getting your other ducks in a row first? Uh, yeah. Will they be uh, accelerated by, you know, working on those things? It also depends on the person. For some of the people we have coming in for these therapies are professional athletes, right? Or people that are actually on very skilled diet ready and mm -hmm. in the gym every day and they just want to get back to the thing. So it's, it's a case by case basis, but definitely, uh, definitely, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, it, it's crucial. And, and, when, and that goes back to me once again referring out to, uh, you know, like I said, I refer to PTs and chiropractic. And that. people are like, well, you're an acupuncturist. Why would you refer me to a chiropractor? I'm like, because I use the same chiropractor. I go every week. I see the same physical therapist every week. It works and it works in tandem. It's not, one or the other the more you do for yourself as long as you're working with good people the better results you're going to get mm -hmm. that's very true that's very very true and, and you know they say disease or it's not always one thing it's a collection of symptoms that or collection of factors that lead you to that to that disease or that condition and i feel like when it comes to healing and treatment the same principle should apply if you want it fully heal if you want to get that results it's not just one thing you look at it's not just diet, it's not just stress, it's not just acupuncture, but if you take the same approach and combine a bunch of modalities, you're going to increase your chance of healing just way, just the same way that a bunch of factors together would increase your chance of disease, you know, so it works both ways. And, and the key word I took out of that is want, if you want, right? Yes. A lot of people think that they want, but once again, they're not willing to do it. And it doesn't always have to be complicated. You know, people come in and they're terrified. We're going to put them on these ultra restrictive diets and we're going to tell them you can never eat anything ever again. And, and that's not always the case, as you know, it depends. I mean, if we try everything and nothing else works, then okay, then we know, okay, maybe it's time for a super restrictive elimination diet. And then you can go back to what doesn't bother you. Uh, but it, it doesn't always have to be extreme. And that's one of the things I try to tell patients, you know, it's a step by step process. Yeah. You're not going to wake up like that and be a different person overnight. Right. We didn't get there like that. I know my healing process was not quick. Yeah. Um, and I know your healing process, right? And for both of us, it's still yeah. ongoing and we still have challenges. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a lifestyle, right? And and if you want to get the full benefits, you're gonna have to you're gonna need to make some lifestyle changes step by step. Uh, and, and our job as coaches or practitioners or clinicians is to make it simple enough and uh appealing to people so they can see one that it is number one that it's possible yes and number two that it, it's not that hard mm -hmm. it's not that hard the, the, the hard part is you thinking that it's hard and refusing <laughs> to accept the fact that it is possible to fully heal and reverse a lot of these stuff 
and also that you still may have some, you know, that you might not be a hundred percent, but you know, there's, there's always room for improvement. And, and that, that, I think that's my takeaway with most, most people, uh, you know, people come in and they want these black and whites, like, am I going to get better? How fast am I going to get better? You know, what percentage? And I'm like, well, you know, I would love to give you an answer, but I don't know. It depends how your body responds to the treatment. It depends how compliant you are with the protocols. Uh, it depends on your, you know, spiritual, emotional relationship, um, and, and so on and so on. So we have to see how you respond. But if you're open-minded, if you're willing to make changes, um, you know, you're going to get a lot better responses than the people that come in and just like, yeah, uh, shoot me right here, and I'll see you in you know, three years. When <laughs> can I have an issue? Right. And the goal is always to get people better so they don't have to come back. Yeah. But you know, everybody has a different timeline. And it's and I don't we don't you don't create that timeline. I don't create that timeline for them. And you know, part of it is, is give and take, wait and see. Hmm. So true. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. That's that actually made me giggle. <laughs> That's very true. Um, thank you for your time today. I have loved everything that you've had to share and all the contact details for Dr. Fields is on the page below this interview. So if you have any questions, need any information, please reach out to him. I know him and his team would be more than happy to help you wherever possible. Jonathan, thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you, Stephanie. I had so much fun and it's always great to talk to you. Once again, I can't stress enough um, how important this work that you're doing is and bringing all these people together. And I'm really so proud of you. And uh, for everything you're doing 100 percent i'll always be there uh any way i can uh, to help you along with the process and, and keep this uh sharing uh good information with people on how they can heal themselves naturally and you know hopefully reduce or minimize the you know the amount of drugs and medications and surgeries and things like that um obviously some things are necessary but i always tell my patients and i believe that that all of those things should be last resort yes so anybody who's on the same page it, it's always good to talk to and i think you're really good at it and i, I hope to see you uh, keep growing and growing and more success at these conferences and stuff thank you so much for those kind words it really 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 means a lot to me and your constant support and encouragement just means so much so thank you and the work that you are doing as well is out of this world any way that i can ever support i you know Guys, I'm not kidding. Like, get hold of Dr. Fields. He is phenomenal. The, you are probably one of the most talented people I've ever met. And just the work you're doing is changing the world. We need a lot more of this happening <laughs> a lot more frequently. So wherever I can support that, I'm happy to. I appreciate it. I feel the same. Well, uh, I'll let you get back to the conference. And good luck with the rest <laughs> of the speakers. And uh, we'll talk later. Let me know how else I can help out. Take Thank care, you. Stephanie. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching. <laughs>